This video gives some examples of equations with logs in them, like this one. In order to solve equations like this one, we have to free the variable from the log, and we'll do that using exponential functions. My first step in solving pretty much any kind of equation is to simplify it and isolate the tricky part. In this case, the tricky part is the part with the log in it. So I can isolate it by first adding 3 to both sides. That gives me 2ln 2x plus 5 equals 4. And then I can divide both sides by 2. Now that I've isolated the tricky part, I still need to solve for x. But x is trapped inside the log function. To free it, I need to somehow undo the log function. Well, log functions and exponential functions undo each other. And since this is a log base e, I need to use the exponential function base e also. So I'm going to take e to the power of both sides. In other words, I'll take e to the ln 2x plus 5, and that's going to equal e to the power of 2. Now e to the ln of anything, I'll just write a for anything, that means e to the log base e of a, the e to the power and log base e undo each other, so we just get a. I'm going to use that principle over here, e to the ln of 2x plus 5, the e and the log base e undo each other, and we're left with 2x plus 5 on the left side. So 2x plus 5 is equal to e squared, and from there it's easy to finish the problem and solve for x by subtracting 5 from both sides and then dividing by 2. So I'll just write the third step here is to, I'll just say, finish solving for x. There's one last step we need to do when solving equations with logs in them, and that's to check our answers because we may get extraneous solutions. An extraneous solution is a solution that comes out of the solving process but doesn't actually satisfy the original equation. And those can happen for equations with logs in them because we might get a solution that makes the argument of the log negative or zero, and we can't take the log of a negative number or zero. So let's check and plug in the solution of e squared minus 5 over 2. We'll plug that in for x in our original equation and see if that works. So let's see, the 2's cancel here. So I get 2ln e squared minus 5 plus 5 minus 3. I want that to equal 1. Well, now my 5's cancel. And so I have 2ln e squared minus 3 that I want to equal 1. Well, I think this is going to work out because, let's see, ln is log base e. And log base e of e squared, that's asking the question, what power do I raise e to to get e squared? Well, I have to raise it to the power of 2 to get e squared. So this becomes 2 times 2 minus 3. And uh, does that equal 1? 4 minus 3 does equal 1. So that all checks out. And we didn't have any problem with taking the log of a negative number or zero. We didn't get any extraneous solutions, so this is our solution. The second equation is a little bit trickier because there's a log in two places. Now, notice that this is a log where there's no base written, so a base 10 is implied. So I'm already thinking, in order to undo a log base 10, I'm going to want to take a 10 to the power of both sides. Of course, it's still a good idea to isolate the tricky part, but there's nothing really to isolate here. So I'm going to say, I um, uh, can't do it here. So we'll just jump right to straight step two and take 10 to the power of both sides. OK, so that's going to give me 10 to the whole thing, log x plus 3 plus log x. That whole thing is in the exponent equals 10 to the 1 power. Well, I know what to do with the right side. 10 to the 1 is just 10. But what do I do with the 10 to these two things added up? Well, remembering my exponent rules, I know that when you add up the exponent, that's what happens when you multiply two things. So this is the same thing as 10 to the log x plus 3 times 10 to the log x. 
right? Because when you multiply two things, you add the exponents. So these are the same. Okay, now we're in business because 10 to the log base 10, those undo each other. And so this whole expression here simplifies to x plus 3. Similarly, 10 to the log base 10 of x is just x. So I'm multiplying x plus 3 by x. That's equal to 10. Now I have an equation I can deal with. It's a quadratic, so I'm going to first multiply out to make it look more like a quadratic, get everything to one side so it's equal to 0, and, and now I can either factor or use the quadratic formula. I think this one factors. It looks like x plus 5 times x minus 2, so I'm going to get x is negative 5 or x is 2. So that was all the third step to finish solving for x. Finally, we need to check our solutions to make sure we haven't gotten some extraneous ones. So let's see, if x equals negative 5, if I plug that in to my original equation, that says I'm checking that log of negative 5 plus 3 plus log of negative 5, checking that's equal to 1. Well, this is giving me a queasy feeling, and I hope it's giving you a queasy feeling too, because log of negative 2 does not exist, right? You can't take the log of a negative number. Same thing with log of negative 5. So x equals negative 5 is an extraneous solution. It doesn't actually solve our original equation. Let's check the other solution, x equals 2. So now we're checking to see if log of 2 plus 3 plus log of 2 is equal to 1. Since there's no problem with taking logs of negative numbers or 0 here, this should work out fine. And just to finish checking, we can see, let's see, this is log of 5 plus log of 2. We want that to equal 1. But using my log rules, uh, the sum of two logs is the log of the product. So log of 5 times 2, we want that to equal 1. And that's just log base 10 of 10, and that definitely equals 1 because log base 10 of 10 says what power do I raise 10 to to get 10, and that power is 1. So the second solution, x equals 2, does check out, and that's our final answer. Before I leave this problem, I do want to mention that some people have an alternative approach. Some people like to start with the original equation and then use log rules to combine everything into one log expression. So since we have the sum of two logs, we know that's the same as the log of a product, right? So we can rewrite the left side as log of x plus 3 times x. That equals 1. Then we do the same trick of taking 10 to the power of both sides. And as before, the 10 to the power and the log base 10 undo each other. And we get x plus 3 times x equals 10, just like we did before. In the first solution, we ended up using exponent rules to rewrite things. In the second alternative method, we used log rules to rewrite things. So the methods are really pretty similar, pretty equivalent, and they certainly will get us to the same answer. So we've seen a couple examples of equations with logs in them and how to solve them. And the key step is to use exponential functions to undo the log. In other words, take e to the power of both sides to undo natural log and take 10 to the power of both sides to undo log base 10.